Can you help me? What do you need? I want your reviews. <laughs>Yeah, but who carved that doll? Is a question I never found myself asking while watching the Conjuring movies, but damn it, I got an answer. But since I did enjoy the greater majority of the Conjuring movies in the past, I found myself interested in checking out today's movie when it hit theaters recently. So let's see how that went as I review Annabelle Creation. So, how was Annabelle created? Well, when a mommy creepy doll and a daddy creepy doll love each other very much. No, that's not how it happened. What actually happened was that in 1943, professional disturbing and creepy doll maker Samuel Mullins lives with his wife Esther and his daughter B. At least that's how it goes until a passing truck, a lug nut, and stupidity makes B much less living. Twelve years later, the Mullins have allowed sister Charlotte to move in with six orphan children, most notably Janice and Linda. At this time, Samuel is still pretty mopey about the whole dead kid thing, and Esther is confined to her room downstairs. Samuel gives the orphans free reign of the house, except for B's room, which is locked and haunted. Locked. And it stays that way. Until the middle of the night when Janice wakes up and the door is wide open. Inside, minor spooky occurrences lead Janice into a locked closet, with pages of the Bible glued to the wall and one of Samuel's terrifying dolls sitting in the center. And strangely enough, this is not the creepiest thing Janice is going to see in this house. Who to thunk? So I would have to say that I continue to enjoy the Conjuring series. It's not the most mind-blowing or genre-redefining movie by a long shot, but it was enjoyable and effective when it wanted to be. Also, without spoiling it, I really dug how they tied this movie in with the first Annabelle movie. I found the movie to be spooky, while perhaps not being overly scary, but I'm such a goddamn manly man, what would ever scare me? Okay, except for those creepy dolls, I guess. Or more accurately, the thought that at the time they were called the world's finest handcrafted dolls. That's a lot of fingers. Even though each and every one of them is nightmare fuel. And not just the one with the demon living in it. When those little orphan girls show up and have their own dolls, each one of them is way less disturbing. Personally, I'd take the factory produced product that doesn't make me want to kill myself out of fear over his handcrafted evil any day. Also, can anyone tell me how B is a nickname for Annabelle? Shouldn't it be Anna, or Belle, or Nabble, or some sound that actually comes out of her name at all? Also, I kind of understand the motivation to surround the demon doll with the word of God by gluing pages of the Bible all over the wall. But wouldn't it kind of be a sin to shred the Bible in the first place? Something to think about. I felt like this movie had a couple of nice spooky gags. I think the one that comes to mind is the figure that's under the sheet and then it disappears. Although it's not entirely dissimilar to the one that they used in Paranormal Activity, but it still works. They also do that thing I like where you can kind of see something spooky going on in the background, but they don't really make a big deal out of it, so it just creates a kind of subconscious uneasy feeling and keeps you looking around all the time. They even have some creepy Easter eggs, like the mirrored crosses design that they have on their door, which probably seemed like a good idea at the time, what with symmetry and all, but then you start realizing that the upside down ones are a little... Satan-y. Also, creepy nun lady from Conjuring 2 shows up in this for a little while, and that lady is horrifying. It actually makes me really interested to see the creepy nun lady standalone movie coming out next year. But this is the kind of horror movie that I like. They have some tension that builds up to scares, and they do have some gore in the end, but it's very well done and they don't rely on it too heavily like some other horror movies do. As always, I think I have the most things to say about the characters in this movie, but since a greater majority of the performances were solid, this is pretty much going to be like a transcript of what you'd hear if you were sitting next to me and I were a stereotypical black lady yelling things at the characters. First of all, you should definitely not go in there, child. And by there, I mean B's room. And by child, I usually mean Janice, or as I called her, Little Forrest, because of the Forrest Gump leg brace she had on her leg. But Little Forrest loved going into B's room. It was creepy as hell the first time, and you straight up saw a ghost. But you keep going in there just because the door is open? To hell with that, you want me in there, you're gonna have to drag me in there. Granted, it probably eventually would have, but still. Also, when you're running away, or doing whatever you call it when you have one of those bum leg things, why are you even bothering with the motorized chair? Bum leg or not, if I'm being chased by demons, I'm rolling my happy ass down those stairs. I mean, she ended up getting tossed down the stairs the hard way anyway, so it might as well have been of your own doing. I assume that would make it hurt less. And then we move on to the second main child, Linda, who also loved going into the spooky horror room, but was also smart and shitty enough to abandon her friend in the room when she found it to be getting too scary. But then again, maybe she wasn't that smart, because she, like most kids in horror movies, seemed to think that the best response to seeing something terrifying is to get under your covers and pull them over your face. Sure, 
Whatever that thing was is scary, but maybe you prefer to see it coming before it actually arrives. <laughs> Can't get me now, asshole. Oh. On the other hand, maybe this girl's just that damn hard. Because later on she sees a full-on demon hand and still somehow manages to fall asleep afterwards, unlike the rest of us that would fall asleep never again. I have only general feelings about the rest of the characters in this movie. First of all, Samuel Mullins didn't really make a lot of sense to me, even beyond the fact that his dolls were so popular even though they were ugly as sin. His performance didn't really say to me that he was in mourning. Just kind of said that he was an asshole. Also, even before he was an asshole, he didn't really make sense to me because he tried to tickle his daughter's feet through her shoes, and it doesn't really work like that. I also didn't really get the other girls in this movie. First of all, how did no one ever hear all of the screaming going on in this house? This house is not that big, and you're one room over. Also, how did all the girls that were outside not see anything when little Forrest wheelchair just threw her into the barn? Also, why did one of them actually go into that barn when they were scared later? If you're in this situation with three other people, you get out in the open, you go back to back in a circle, and you wait for sunlight. Also, I never really understand how people in horror movies never just try to fight these things. Personally, I feel like I'd be pretty quick to throw down with something scary, but strangely out of cowardice. I feel like my thought process would be, let's just get this over with. Either you knock it off, or I die. Both are preferable to letting you torment me for a few days, and then killing me. So... Annabelle creation turned out pretty well. It's a pretty basic horror movie story, but we get to see how this doll got so evil and get a decent spook along the way. The characters do a lot of stupid things, but when do they not in a horror movie? At least these ones are pretty well acted. Also, this movie sets up a whole movie about the spooky nun, which is my favorite part of the whole series. And since the series hasn't disappointed me yet, I'll be sure to check that one out next year. But you don't have to wait till next year to check out my other videos, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any comments or anything you'd like me to review, just leave them in the section below. And so for this video, I have been Robert, and Annabelle Creation has just been reviewed. If I were the hypochondriac kid, I would have broken my arm by constantly beating Loudmouth's face in, as opposed to breaking it by falling through a hole in the ground. And not because of the actual things that he was saying about my mom. I mean, Loudmouth has actually seen the sissy kid's mom, right? If Loudmouth kept going on about how he banged my mom and she looked like that, I'd have to ask him which one of us is meant to be more disgusted by that.